Now we will hear further detail on both objectives from two experts at HHS. First, Dr. John Jernigan from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will present on CDC's healthcare associated infection related programs, as well as on MRSA prevention. Then you'll hear from Dr. Jim Battles from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, who will discuss the national prevention program aimed at eliminating central line associated bloodstream infections. Dr. Jernigan? Thank you very much, Ronnie, and it's a pleasure to be with you all today. I'd like to take this opportunity to review with you some of uh, CDC activities related to these two 2020 Healthy People 2020 goals, that is specifically preventing MRSA and also central line associated bloodstream infections. I'll also be pleased to give you a little more detail and update on the progress that we uh, are making towards these goals. Next slide, please. I'd like to outline for you the, the, the major components of activity that CDC is putting forth towards these goals, and I think it's uh, uh, reflective of what we're doing uh, as, as an agency in general, uh, HHS-wide. And these include three sort of major areas. One is providing data for action. As we all know, if you can't measure a certain problem, then you really have little hope of preventing it. So we need to have actionable measures to work with to uh, track our progress and to see how well we're doing uh, in approaching uh, our objectives. The second is you have to know something about how to prevent these infections, and that's where prevention science comes in. We have to have uh, recommendations for public health practice to, uh, to uh, actually prevent the infections, and we need ongoing research to continually inform uh, these guidelines and make them as, mo as effective as possible. But that's not enough. We also have to have support for implementing these recommendations. Uh, at CDC, we're very heavily involved in supporting implementation through state health departments uh, and other bodies, and as you'll hear later from Jim Battle, uh, ARC has also been very active in this area, and we think these three uh, interdependent areas are, are key to meeting our goals. Next slide. With regards to providing data for action, we at CDC are providing the measurement systems for these two particular goals, and we do that through two means. One is our National Healthcare Safety Network, which is a national system that's been in place for many years now uh, that's available for tracking and preventing healthcare associated infections in healthcare. They provide metrics to allow us to demonstrate progress both at a national level but also at a local level so that individual facilities can track how they're doing and compare themselves to other facilities into national trends to know um, what sort of progress they're making. We can also use these data to uh, aggregate uh, rates across states so that health departments and, and other individuals can uh, track progress at the state level we can also use these data uh, for CMS to attach to their payment policies. Another important surveillance system and measurement system is operated through our, what's known as our Emerging Infections Program. This is a system of 10 states throughout the United States in which we do population-based surveillance for certain health conditions. And in, not all of these are healthcare-associated infections, but some of the healthcare-associated infections we track include MRSA and also C. difficile and certain uh, multidrug-resistant bacteria. We're using this particular system to track uh, the rate of invasive MRSA in the United States, and that's the measurement system that we're using for this particular goal. Next slide, please. In terms of prevention science, CDC plays an important role in uh, creating guidelines for prevention of healthcare-associated infections. And these guidelines have provided the basis for some of the checklists that have been so successful, particularly in preventing, preventing central line associated bloodstream infections. Our guideline development process is uh, performed through the, a federal advisory committee known as the Healthcare Infection Control Practices Advisory Committee. Um, they uh, assess the literature through systematic review of scientific evidence and, and produce guidelines that address specific infection types. Uh, we try to use a transparent process. We publish the methodology that we use to come up with the guidelines, so it's a very, a very clear to everyone who might be interested in using these. And we try to provide accompanying tools to prioritize the interventions for implementation. Next slide. 
These are just two examples of the HICPAC guidelines that are most relevant to the topics uh, at hand today. On the left, you see a guideline that was published in 2006, Management of Multidrug-Resistant Organisms in Healthcare Settings, and within this is included guidelines for, develop, for controlling MRSA infection. On the right is our uh, newly updated guidelines for the prevention of intravascular catheter-related infections that was just updated and published this year. Next slide. We also think there's an important role for ongoing prevention research. Um, as, as Don pointed out in his slides, even with our current best practices, um, we can't prevent, we think, all healthcare-associated infections, although we do have uh, the goal, ultimately, of eliminating them and driving those rates to zero. But to do that, we need additional prevention research uh, to, to enhance and improve upon our current guidance recommendations. We at CDC do this through our Prevention Epicenter program, which is a program in which we collaborate with leading academic centers to uh, identify novel candidate prevention strategies in healthcare settings and in patient populations. Some of the recent examples of projects that have been performed through the Epicenters program that are relevant to today's topics include uh, regional interventions to prevent MRSA, the use of chlorhexidine bathing to prevent MRSA infection transmission, and also central line-associated bloodstream infections, exploring novel environmental cleaning strategies, identifying virulence factors for MRSA that might be helpful in identifying vaccine targets, and also, uh, in a very nice example of interagency collaboration, we helped uh, design a multi-center trial to determine com the comparative effectiveness of three different MRSA prevention strategies and partnered with ARC to fund this trial, which is un uh, underway and actually almost nearing its completion, and we look forward to the results of that trial very soon. Next slide. We at CDC uh, also provide uh, prevention support through state health departments. Uh, we provide funding uh, to develop the infrastructure for HAI prevention control in state and local health uh, departments uh, to improve the quality and quantity of HAI reporting, including electric, electronic data capture. Um, we have uh, 26 states that have developed or expanded HAI prevention initiatives, including uh, those focusing on, on CLABSI and MRSA. We have 18 states that re have received funding through the Recovery Act to support prevention collaboratives for CLABSI in particular, and we've shown promising results at the end of year one and year two data are pending. There are additional 15 states that have received funding through the Affordable Care Act uh, to support ongoing prevention initiatives. And uh, we think that these prevention initiatives uh, support enrollment and complement other prevention activities, such as the CUSP prevention collaboratives that uh, Dr. Battles will tell you about in a few moments. Next slide. These are just two examples of prevention toolkits that are available to, uh, to state health departments, but also to anyone who's interested. Uh, we have other toolkits as well, but I've highlighted specifically the ones that are relevant to our topic today, CLABSI on the left and preventing MRSA infections on the right, and there's a website there that you can access those. 